that handle, you actually have to screw it tight. Is it good? God is good. All the time. And all the time. Uh, Father in heaven, you're good. Thank you for reminding us that today is a day of rest. Feast your trumpets. Our rest is in you, Jesus, the coming king. And you remind us to present a fire offering. Oh God. Oh God. We give to you everything. Anything we've held on to, we give it to you now, Jesus. Open your word. Stir our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, if you guys have shofars, you guys brought it, we're going to do a blast. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus our God. And Jesus is one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Ain Keloheinu. There is no one like you. So we are going to blow for a few seconds. Feast of Trumpets is about breaking of bonds, breaking, the scripture says to lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely to us. And the message actually goes with that. Get Semini's Cup, that video goes with that. So, y'all ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> traditional services, they'll blow it constantly, one day, every day, at least once a day, every day, um, during the month of Elul, before the Feast of Trumpets, and the Jewish sages thought that it confuses the enemy as to when the king is really coming, the element of surprise. It was a ram's horn that was caught in the thicket. The Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. His strength was caught in the thorns. The strength of man, the man's flesh was caught in the thorns. Imagine the thorn of crown, the crown of thorns on his head. And that's what was the payment for our sin. The breaking of bonds. Why did he take that cup? Leonard Ravenhill, talking about the lady with the tea, she said, Drink it! The Lord told me, You not, you won't be coming in. He was a young pastor because I'm poor and I don't have this and I don't have that. Go to Deuteronomy 6 22. song many years ago that was done for performer Yanni. The, the name of the song is called Love Conquers All. The, sin, the singer sadly passed away um, at, a, at a young age. But the statement is true. 
love conquers all. Sadly, this world will attempt to define love by its own construct in this world. Doesn't the scripture say those who compare themselves by themselves are not wise? Amen. Isn't what the world trying to do is comparing itself by itself, comparing love by its own attempt, and they will fail? This is how we know what love is. 1 John 3, 16. That Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Amen. That is the only definition of love. Love doesn't feel good. Amen. Amen. Love does not feel good. Amen. But it is good. Your actions are an outflow of who you are. Are you a child of the king or are you a child of the devil? I'm sorry, I, that's a hard word. You know you're a child of the king when you deny yourself and you, you are willing. Now there are times we do agree with the enemy and we are a child of the king. And, and, and that's what God is busy trying to get out of us, get out of us. And I believe Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets, is about that. Where God says, you've picked up stuff along the way, i got to break it. You've picked up stuff, time to break it. Time to move on. Every seven years he does it, then every 50 years he does it. We see the patterns in scripture. It's all a type of shadow. That's why we did the song, Break Every Chain. Because, let's face it guys, you guys have stuff that you pick up along the way. And I've preached, I think last Shabbat, that Jesus says, unless I wash your feet, you have no part in me. We do walk in this world and we get dirty. We pick up bondages. We pick up, we pick up, sorry, we, we step in dog poop. We step in, in, in just trash and filth. We do, yes. don't we? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. But nobody, but when somebody says, hey man, you got toilet paper on your shoe. No, I don't. I'm fine. Uh, dude, you just stepped in a big pile of dog stink. I love Forrest Gump. Well, you just stepped in a big pile of doggy do. He says, well, it happens. What? Poop? Well, sometimes. <laughs> Jesus is saying the same thing. You're going to step in filth. That's right. I'm sorry. Love is filthy. You get yourself dirty. That was the prophecy that came out. Stop listening to your past of your hurt and your pain and your, oh, woe is me. Jesus could have said the same thing. Woe is me. He didn't say that. Father, forgive them. He didn't say, ah, oh, stink at him on this cross. No. No. Father, forgive him. No. He took it off. What are you all complaining about? Where is your woe is me? Self-pity, let's call it what it is, idolatry. You are saying, I am God and there is no other. Last time I checked, the first commandment says, Jesus is God and there is no other. Yahweh. He is God and there is no other. Your self-pity is bondage. Sorry, let's face it, it's bondage. Because all you can think about is, is the four walls in your mind. How you're not getting what you want. You're not getting what you feel you deserve. You're not getting satisfaction. Satisfaction in your marriage. Satisfaction in your home. Satisfaction in your work. You're not getting it. No, oh, we should all have a pity party. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not immune. This is word from the Lord. He's saying, I love you. Look at my son. He didn't count equality with God as anything to be grasped, but he took the form of a servant, Philippians 2. Took the form of a servant, learning obedience unto death, even death on a cross. Even taking a criminal sentence. We have some friends that got incarcerated and have done some pretty bad things. And they'll be the first ones to admit, I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. Why did he take the cup? This, this is the message. Why did he take the cup? Did 
Deuteronomy 6.20. When your son asks you in the future what is the meaning of the decrees, statutes, ordinances which the Lord our God has commanded you, tell him we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand. Before our eyes, the Lord inflicted great and devastating signs and wonders on Egypt, on Pharaoh, and on all his household. But he brought us from there in order to lead us in and give us the land that he swore to our fathers. in the hope that you'd be set free. Why? So you go back out there. Jesus came at the pinnacle of time and he said, now go and proclaim freedom. Isaiah 61. Can that be said of you? The Lord has anointed me to proclaim freedom to the oppressed, good news to the poor, binding up the brokenhearted, and, to, and proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. Or are you still stuck in your head of how bad you have it? Jesus came to this earth, drank the dregs, the scum, to identify with our condition. All he asks is you identify with his condition here on earth. He says, I did it. Please do it with me. Abide with me. And I'll abide with you. That I may know him, the power of his resurrection. But again, we forget the fellowship of his suffering. Deny yourself. There's power in that. It's a, it's a paradox. The more you lay it down and say, yes, Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. You will find a strength literally rise up inside you. And you can forgive that person who hurt you so bad. That bad business deal of $5,000 that they owe you. That money's not yours. That business was never yours to begin with. That circumstance is so that you can pour out the favor of God upon that person that has hurt themselves. And this is why he took the cup. Exodus 13, verse 3. Then Moses said to the people, Remember that this day when you came out of Egypt, out of the place of slavery, for the Lord brought you out of here by the strength of his hand. Guys, this is why the Feast of Trumpets is here. God saved you. God delivered you from your anger, from your impatience. Yeah, sorry, children really bring out impatience. You have children, they make you impatient. Children make you want to say, shh, I want to hear. Oh, tough. You know what? You are a child too. Jesus came to say, you don't deserve anything. Jesus came to say, look at me. You deserve this. Jesus came and said, Remember, you're a slave to sin. Bad temper, lying, fudging numbers, hiding your past. Guys, I'm sorry, your past sucks. It's nasty, it's disgusting. Stop hiding it. And he said, oh yeah, but I, I've told Jesus everything. Okay, take a step in faith and tell the next person. Tell them, mm -hmm. I've done this. And you know, now I, I say broad strokes. You know, I mean, don't go into gory details. You know, we've all, you know, those of you who know my past, I was a sexual addict. And I've had multiple partners. I was a manipulator and a narcissist. And I took advantage of people. I'll be the first one to open it. I wanted to commit suicide. And of recent, I had PTSD, and then I was healed. I've not been kind to my kids. As a Christian, I've not been kind to my kids. I've been harsh, harsh and disciplined. I've been short-tempered, been angry. Outbursts of anger, control. We love Hebrews 4.12. Word of God is 
living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. We don't like Hebrews 4.13. Every creature, let's face it, you guys are creatures. Because we're created by the Creator. We're all naked and exposed before Him to whom we must all give an account. Stop hiding. Guys, admit it. I'm sorry, I, I'm impatient. I get angry. Or, you know, admit, you know what, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm lazy. And, you know, this may be you, it may not be. I don't want to get up and work. Okay? I don't want to put myself under another person. I don't want to take a minimum wage job. I don't want to clean my house. I don't want to do these things. Jesus hangs there. He says, all those feelings inside you, that's what put them on the cross. All those inconveniences, do you understand? Revival is not going to happen. I'm not talking about drink. I'm not talking about drugs. I'm talking about the sins of the heart, your emotional issues. Your laziness is sin. It's not diligence. Your anger is sin. Your outburst, Galatians 5, outburst of anger, work of the flesh. Your coveting, I want a situation that I don't have right now. Tough, you are coveting. And unless your pipes are clean, sorry, the Holy Spirit cannot fill you up. Because if your cup is full of filth, he can only give you that much. Guys, the Lord right now is calling everybody worldwide on the Feast of Trumpets. Guys, it's time to be free. It's time to be free. Stop holding on to your sin. Go to Galatians 5. The Lord's doing something. If, uh, First John, if we fellowship with him as he is in the light, come on, guys, open up. Verse 16, Galatians 5, 16. Father, and I pray that we pour out, that we come to the cross in Jesus' name and say, Lord, not just my physical actions, even my emotions. You can have my emotions in Jesus' name. Lord, not I, but Christ. I say then, this is even for my children. Guys, constantly audit your lives. Don't wait another moment without confessing to the Lord every day, every moment. I need thee every hour, every moment, every second. I need thee. Every sing, single stinking second, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Really? Or do you come to him on your terms? When you're, when you're in your bind. There's a song by Toby Mack, Till the Day I Die. You only come to him when you want to, when you're going through some drama. That's the only time you call him. I guess I don't understand that life. <laughs> for, I say then walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit. The Spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other. So you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the condemnation, under the law, under the, the earthly instruction. Okay? I'm not even going to go into it because he's talking about spiritual. Now the works of the flesh are obvious or apparent. Sexual immorality. Okay, well, we think, well, I, I'm not into pornography. I'm not into this. I'm, well, does your head turn every time you see a woman? I'm not even talking about a scantily clad woman. You're in the store. You're with your wife. You're walking, and your head goes like this. And you are spending an extra second more than you know. Now, temptations come. I understand that. Where you're like, shoot, why am I doing that? Yeah. Lord, I understand that. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But that second thought, you know, she does look sort of nice. You just committed sin. Do you guys understand that? You just committed yes. sin. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, whoever looks upon a woman has already committed a lottery in her. Now, for, for, for the men, I understand, sometimes you'll walk and you're like, this, this, this thing, something like, Ugh! and 
You're not wanting to. You're like, Lord, I came here to buy milk and eggs and I'm being accosted. Mm. Well, that, that's, that's perfectly fine. We do get temptations. Temptations doesn't mean you're in sin. Temptation is that. It's an arrow. You're getting shot at. You're getting shot at. You're getting shot at. That's why you put it Moral impurity. That, that is huge. Moral impurity can be anything like cheating on your taxes. Even a dollar. Even like, you know, I really don't need to report that. Oh, you better. You better be honest to the Lord and to others. Promiscuity. Oh, well, you know, just just a little talking with someone who is not your spouse in a friendly sort of way. Sorry, that's... You're getting ready to give your heart away. And not even... And even, even for... A, and I'm not talking in a sexual way, a woman and a woman, and you're not with your husband, but you're sharing with them things that you really should be sharing with your spouse in the sense of you, you are giving your heart away to a person that is not your spouse. That is a moral, that, that is a promiscuity. Leanne would call it prostituting your heart. Idolatry. Who is your God? Who are you giving time and attention to? Or what? Spending time on the internet? Social media? Family? Okay, human affections? Popularity? Groceries? Do you have a pornographic refrigerator? Do you run to food for comfort? As opposed to getting on your knees? And I tell people, if you don't know what to just do this, do this. Jesus, help me. I hurt. What's so wrong in actually physically doing it to those who have medical situations that hinder them? I understand that. Do what is necessary to say, oh, God, help me. Or I'm, gonna, I'm going to fall. Say to your spouse, I need you to help me and pray for me. I'm really struggling right now. Doesn't the psalm say cry out? The word in Hebrew is tsa'ak. Shout. Make a fool of yourself. I'd rather be a fool for Jesus and think of myself as somebody who's got my stuff all together. I don't care how... Guys, I've lost everything. I don't care what people think of me anymore. I, I'm done. I, 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 I don't have time to think about it. I can't tell you how much I've lost. But I'll tell you how much I've gained. That's right. Yeah. How uh, sorcery. The word there is pharmakia. You guys trust in the drugs. And I'm not even talking about illegal. You trust in medicine to save you? Oh, if, I, 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 if only I take that. Don't get me wrong, medicines. If you take it in faith, believe in faith. Lord, ought I take this medicine? And if you run to it, Anytime you have a problem, oh, I got a headache, I got to go take a Tylenol. Really? Why don't you say, Lord, my head hurts. What do I do? He may say, you got a problem with this anger. Mm. Or you got a problem with this inconvenience. Or you need to go talk to so-and-so because I have a mission for you. Or the fact that you got molested in your childhood and I want to heal you. Mm. Or pick one. Every circumstance, God's trying to bring it out. He, the whole point is, I want, he's saying, be led by the Spirit. I want you to run to me. Okay, so, um, hatreds. Okay? What, what, what hatred do you have? Bitterness. What are you holding where you're refusing to go there? Strife. Have you sought forgiveness or do you hold grudges? Even with companies that do you wrong, like big companies, like I'm going to throw one out there. Well, I will never buy a Ford because I had this, 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 and the dealer was this, this, this. Really? You know what? It's not so much they need to forgive. They have a company. They don't care. But it's your heart. It's your heart of a forgiving nature because that's God's nature. Jealousy. You have something that you don't feel you have? Outbursts of anger. 
Something doesn't go your way, do you kick and scream? Something, uh, the circumstance is really disruptive and this is really getting on your nerves? Really? Do you understand God was gracious and merciful with you that he died on a cross for it? He is ever loving. Selfish ambitions. You want to rise to the top? You want to push everybody down in the process? Dissensions. Where you're not agreeable, no matter what. You're always giving a statement as to why. Or one, an authority says, well, such and such. And you're like, no, it's not. You guys understand that that's a dissension. That means you want to start a fight. You're picking a fight. And I rebuke any distractions in Jesus' name from this message, especially from going out, because this is a glorious thing. Because God is in the middle of setting people free. Factions, are you taking sides? As opposed to uniting in the, in the blood of Jesus Christ with a person who calls himself someone who loves Jesus. Love Jesus too with them. Don't worry about your opinions. Agree where you can. And magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 98. Or Psalm 37. Magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. Come exalt his name together. Envy. Zero. Or rather envy and murders. Hated someone in your heart? Is there somebody you don't like? You should be the most agreeable, loving person out there because of Jesus in you. Mm -hmm. John Purvis, who wrote the book Fair Sunshine, if you've never read that book, you need to read it because I believe we're getting there soon. It's about the English Civil War and Scottish Covenanters during the 1600s. He's a friend of Leonard Ravenhill, the author. And the book was about the Scottish Covenanters, martyrs, who died for their faith. And it was said of John Purvis, he was one of the most gracious, loving, Jesus-filled person. It was said, John, you would give grace to the devil. That's how gracious he was. That's how kind he was. Guys, that should be said of us. It should never be said of a Christian. Well, that guy's not. He's so critical, judgmental, whatnot. We do, take, we do draw lines in the sand. I'm not saying that we don't stand up for things. But what I am saying is the love of God, mercy will triumph over judgment. We ought to be the most loving, giving people. I'm not saying condoning or compromising, but I'm saying preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified at all times. If there is any relationship to be had, it better come from the fact that you are a Christian. If they say, look, if you want a relationship with us, you better stop talking to Jesus. The very next word that they about say, no, my relationship with Jesus is first. And if you cannot have a relationship under that banner, then I'm sorry, we're going to have to cut this off because I will not compromise. Guys, it happened to my mom and brother. I will not compromise. It happened recently with Esther's parents where they said, we want you to stop praying out loud before us. We said, no, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. We can't do that. Sorry. We love you. We will not compromise. Yom Tovah is a day where you make that line and say, I love you, but I'm not a slave to sin. You're telling the devil, no more anger, no more bitterness, drunkenness. Are you out of control? Do you want to just go have a drink? Does it satisfy you? Guys, we're in war, and you're on duty, carousing. You guys want to get together and party and have a good time and pretend like everything's okay? And, uh, oh yeah, we do the... We do the whole church thing, but yeah, we have, you know, work is work, and, and we go about our business. 
Sorry folks, you're eternal beings. God made you, God owns you, God will take it away. Naked you came, naked you go. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You're a servant. There's absolutely no ambition in you outside of the advancement of Jesus Christ. Last thing, Revelation 3, verse 17. He says, he's talking about the church in Laodicea. He says this. Because you say I'm rich, I have become wealthy and need nothing. And you don't know that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, naked. Jesus took that cup because he wanted you to see you were rich, or you were poor, uh, poor, naked, pitiful, and blind. That's why he drank that cup. You don't deserve a single thing. You don't deserve a single thing on this earth. When was the last time you drank a, cl- a cup of cold water to the glory of God? When was the last time you said, Jesus, thank you so much for this coffee. I don't deserve it. Thank you so much. I get to be around people. Have you ever been lonely? Have you ever been alone? Everybody's rip-roaring having a good time? And you're isolated? You ever been forsaken? You ever live on dirt floor? You ever been thrown in jail for a crime you didn't do just because you say you love Jesus? You ever been rejected, cut off? They don't owe you anything. Nobody owes you anything. God would say, or I would tell my kids, I'm like, well, I don't have this, and he did that. I say, tough stink. This world's not friendly. The world hates you because they hated Jesus. Because they didn't know him. You should be thankful that every waking moment of your life, of your existence, is spent to glorify Jesus Christ. It's spent to glorify him in heaven. Your existence is an open rebuke to those around you. You should, the very first thing I did now, thank you, Jesus. I get to be a light. I get to be a light. I am existing right now as a light that the moment I walk out, people shouldn't bow down and worship you. No, I'm not saying that. But people see, uh, you have something I don't, and I want that. They should be saying that of you. And if they don't, I'm not saying it's going to happen all the time. They should see a transformed life. They should see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. They should see Jesus Christ peering through the windows of your soul, your eyes. Do you have light or are you in bondage? Do you have light or are you still a slave? Who the Son sets free is free indeed. That's why Jesus came. When he drank that cup, it's to prove to you that that's where you belong. That is where you were. You were blind, you were poor, you were wretched, you were a slave. Jesus came to set us free. We were slaves to Egypt, now we're slaves to sin and death. And our tendency is towards death. The horn is blowing over you. The shofar is blowing over you. And one of these days, the shofar will be blowing. Woo! Jesus.
as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. If he were to come right now, folks, 2 Timothy 4, he will come to those all who love his appearing. Do you love his appearing? Because if you don't love his appearing, he's going to come with fire. Are you ready for him to come? Are you ready in your heart? If he was to say right now, and he's knocking on the door, are you ready for him to say, okay, Lord, please take me? Yep. Hallelujah. Search your heart now. Go before him and say, Lord, search me, know me, try me, know my thoughts, and see if there's any wickedness in me, please. Because I do not want to come to you in a wicked condition. Search me, oh God. Please, search me. I beg you. Father in heaven, your word is life. Jesus is a blessing to all of mankind. You are our God, oh Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, revive us, restore us. Make us ready for your appearing. In Jesus' name. Amen.